A welcome to our week four of our reading together through John Blanchard's book, Unwrapped. I hope you're getting a lot out of reading this book, and I hope that as you know that we're going through it together, that it's helping you to know that, that others in our church are, are learning uh, the same truths at the same time as we are. And, you know, you can always uh, put something on WhatsApp or in our uh, Facebook group to to just show others uh, what encouragements you found from this book in this week. Of course, this week's chapter is called Big Words, Great Truths. And as usual, I'm just going to go through uh, those questions and give you my answers now. Uh, the first question in this chapter, the author speaks of several important words that relate to our salvation. What are they? Well, the first one he mentions is propitiation. That's an unusual word, isn't it? Propitiation. We don't use that word in everyday conversation, but actually it is a key biblical term. It speaks of atonement through sacrifice. It's all about turning anger to approval, turning frowns to smiles. Imagine if you would a married couple and it's morning and they've had a, a big argument, a big falling out. And all day long, the, the wife has been seething. She's been so cross with her husband for his stupidity. But then he, he comes home at the end of the day and he's got a great big bunch of flowers that he's spent a lot of money on. And he says sorry to her. And her frown is turned to a smile. Her anger is gone. And now, again, she approves of her husband. That man has propitiated his wife. He has turned her anger to approval, her frown to a smile. Well, in his death, that's what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for us. He has propitiated God, turned God's frown into God's smile, turned God's anger into God's approval. That's the first word. Second word is ransom. And that doesn't need anywhere near the same amount of explanation, I don't think. We know what a ransom is. Jesus Christ has paid the price for our freedom from sin and judgment. Third word, redemption. Well, that has a similar meaning to ransom. It means to be bought back. Forgiveness. Uh, a word that perhaps we use a lot more regularly than the others, certainly than propitiation. And we know what it means to forgive. There will be times in your life when somebody has done something that has upset you or hurt you and you have forgiven them. But the forgiveness of God is in an entirely different league to the forgiveness that we practice. In Jesus Christ, our sin is carried as far away from us as the east is from the west. God buries it in the deepest sea and he chooses to remember it no more. That's the forgiveness we have from God through the Lord Jesus Christ. And the fifth of those words is reconciliation. Again, a concept that we're very familiar with. To be reconciled is to make friends, to make up after a falling out. And in Jesus Christ, we have been reconciled to God. We have been made God's friends once more. We have been brought close to God. So these are five wonderful words, words that we need to know and understand and rejoice in. And they're all linked closely together, of course, but each one is a distinct aspect of our gospel salvation. Well, question two was a little bit more personal. I asked you to think about which of these words you are most thrilled by. And in our house, well, we all answered very differently to this question. I chose propitiation because this idea of God's frowning, angry face being turned into his smile of approval and acceptance. Well, that just thrills me. But the truth is, all these words are wonderful and amazing. Like a, di like a diamond has so many facets, so many faces, and each is beautiful. So does our salvation. They're all thrilling words. But if one of these has, has jumped out at you, like propitiation jumps out for me, why not share it on WhatsApp and just give a word or two of, 
of why you've picked uh, that one. Well, question three, why should we give thanks to God? This is how John Blanchard uh, finishes this chapter of his book about giving thanks to God. And as he reminds us from the Psalms, it is good to give thanks to the Lord. It prevents us from being self-centred, making everything about us, and it gives God the glory. And in these five words, we have so much that we should be giving thanks to God for. As Christians, we have every reason to be thankful. So I hope you can reflect on the last two chapters of this book and find many reasons to say thank you to God today for all that he has done for you in your salvation. Now, next week, we'll bring us on to chapter five, which means we're nearing the end of, of this first booklet. I am in the process of printing out uh, a further booklet for the rest of the book, and I hope to get that delivered uh, to you all in the next week or so. Uh, I look forward to, to being with you again next week uh, to share my thoughts from chapter five with you. Until then, I hope you uh, continue to, to read this book and think through the, the truths that are being presented uh, to you in it. Goodbye for now.